Hello, everyone. Welcome to Tech Talks Live Learning. My name is Taylor. I'm with JTB Business Travel and very glad to be hosting this uh, live learning session. Thank you so much for joining. This Tech Talks will be a special one since it is the first of a three-part Tech Talks series. And we have two special guests with us from Prime Numbers Technology to be a part of this. So we're looking forward to that. And we will be hosting these sessions through August. You may have noticed that in the registration link. There are others you can sign up for. So please continue to join us for uh, these live sessions so you can have an insider look uh, at our technology partners and industry leaders and what they're offering. You don't want to miss that. And we hope that you'll enjoy today's session and find it informative and helpful to you and your company and travelers. So we want to get this session rolling by offering some housekeeping tips. This session is in listen-only mode. What that means is you'll be able to hear us, but we won't be able to hear you. This will help keep background noise levels uh, at a minimum and make this Tech Talks experience an enjoyable one for all of you. That being said, if you have any questions at all during today's session, please enter those in using the questions box. And if you haven't located where that tool is yet, you can find it on your GoToWebinar control panel. And it's a really great feature, so please go ahead and use it for sending us any questions that you have today during the session. During today's session, there will be polls that we will activate and you'll receive a prompt on your screen when we do that. And you can go ahead and respond to the poll by selecting your answer within the poll box. Just a note, this Tech Talk session will be recorded. So if needed, you can request a copy of the recording from us by replying to the email you received upon registration or sending us an email at businesstravel at jtbusa.com. So to get right into our session agenda, here is what you have to look forward to. We'll have three speakers today. Ashrava of JTB Business Travel, and our special guest tech talkers uh, will be Kate Saab of Prime Numbers Technology and Mark Bresnahan of Prime Numbers Technology. They'll be speaking to us all about this service powered by Prime Numbers and their experts, so we know that this topic will be well covered. But if you have any questions at all during the session, as mentioned, uh, don't, don't hesitate to send those in to us in preparation of our question and answer session at the conclusion. And at this point, I'm pleased to introduce Osh, my boss and the general manager here at JTD Business Travel, and he will go ahead and get things moving. Osh, it's all yours. Great. Thank you very much. Um, all right, everybody. Uh, welcome to today's session. We thank you for being here, uh, and we do appreciate uh, you uh, being on board uh, today and uh, today's session. Today's session is indeed a special one, as Taylor mentioned. Uh, it is part of a three-part series. I'll talk a little bit about that later, uh, and why it's important for all of you to take part in all three parts, because I think there's many things that you will be able to learn and understand about some changes that we're making in our product offering and our service offering. So with that, I want to welcome everybody uh, from all over the world. Uh, we have folks here from Europe, from North America, uh, and Asia Pacific, and we do thank you all for joining us um, in different time zones, and it's greatly appreciated. So what I want to do is I want to um, start off by talking about uh, travel analytics. And uh, before I get into travel analytics, it is important uh, that I share with you uh, the product, uh, that uh, the offering that we have at JTB Business Travel that supports the travel analytics uh, service offering. Um, and that is our business intelligence suite. So business intelligence was designed to give our clients a complete picture of your of their travel spend and by offering products and services to support that and so over the years uh, we've been able to offer services like travel reports to our clients uh, and travel reports was helpful because you were able to access um, a, uh, a data uh, platform where you can uh, get data and reports yourself uh, but we were also sending you emails on a monthly basis um, from that service and, um, and what we have decided to do um, as we move forward is we're going to transition uh, the service offering. Now, the second service offering uh, that we're going to spend more time in is the travel analytics service offering. And this product has been used at JTB Business Travel by our client services team uh, in order to provide you with uh, quarterly and annual reviews. Uh, and the quarterly and annual reviews support
recorded uh, the uh, the goals of your organization uh, and, and and different um, things that you wanted to be able to accomplish. Uh, and what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be offering uh, direct access to the travel analytics platform uh, to our clients. And I'll talk about that as we move forward. So the way we view travel analytics is that in, in anything in your business today, uh, you rely on analytics to make tra uh, good decisions for your company. So we think that travel should be treated in the same way. And of course, the future of travel, the uh, future of data is not in running reports and filtering, right? So I know many of you spend a lot of time um, you know, extracting reports and, and, and doing things like that, but I really want to shift the focus on making it actionable. And I'll even go as far as saying, you know, the future of data is actually not the future anymore. It's today, right? So we're going to talk about it with the, eye, with the eyes of today. Uh, of course, travel analytics uh, is going to be the way uh, that you, our clients, will be able to take action on things like travel costs and measure your travel program. And Kate will be talking to you a lot more in detail uh, about how to uh, set goals within your organization and how we want you to move forward with your travel program in terms of analyzing it and measuring it. And all of this is all designed uh, to really make your life simpler. So, you know, we don't want you to spend unnecessary time doing things that can be done for you. Uh, in an automated fashion. That's really what travel analytics does and the power of the technology that sits behind it. So speaking of technology, right, uh, so uh, the technology that powers travel analytics is prime numbers uh, technology. And um, of course, we have uh, two guest speakers from uh, that organization. So we as JTB Business Travel have worked with prime numbers technology for a number of years now. And we have been working with them hand in hand in doing a lot of things that you're going to be hearing about today. Uh, the important thing that I like all of you to know is that prime numbers technology is a company that's been in this business uh, for over 10 years, and um, they process uh, 13 million plus transactions. But they've been written about in many of the industry trade publications. Uh, so we at JTB Business Travel is super proud and super excited uh, that we've had this opportunity to work with them, and as a result of all of that, to be able to offer you direct access into their technology. So. Like anything, uh, we're going to evolve and we're going to go through a transition. So I want to paint a picture of what the transition will look like. So as we transition from what we used to call travel reports into this new world called travel analytics, we've put together a timeline or a time frame. And roughly the time frame is June to August of this year. So you'll start to see a lot of the things change over the next couple of months. And you'll notice that uh, your logins will evolve and other things like that will start happening. So I want you to be aware. Uh, that there will be some changes being made. And of course, uh, if you had access to uh, the travel reports uh, suite, uh, you will be provided new logins. Uh, so your current logins will be disabled, and you'll be given new logins, as well as if you've been enjoying the monthly reports that we've been broadcasting out to you, now that will be delivered through Travel Analytics. Uh, but logging, uh, the login and the reports are some of the very basic things that Travel Analytics provides, uh, and uh, you'll be hearing a lot more about uh, what the power of this uh, service is really all about. So as we go through this transition, I just want to make sure that you all know that uh, there will be a process for requesting this. Uh, you want to speak to your client services manager, or you can email csm at jtbusa.com. Uh, but we don't want to just basically take logins from uh, a previous product and provide it to the new product. And you know, one of the reasons for that is that we feel very very strongly that um, that you know the people that want it will ask for it, right? And uh, we don't want to be in the business of supporting a thousand logins when only 200 people are really logging into the product. So we want to make sure that it's it's a it's a valuable experience for you. We don't want to just automatically uh, say, okay, uh, you have the login. Uh, so if you need it, of course, we want you to have it, and but we want to make sure that you are requesting it, and it's not something that we're just um, you know providing without asking you and making sure that you do truly need it. Uh, but today you're going to learn about all of that, and you'll learn about why this is so important. So I hope that you will access the, the service, and you'll be talking about that. So Taylor talked about it being a three-part series earlier, and that's what it is. And you know, we when we launched this uh, this uh, session uh, a few weeks ago, uh, we launched it without it being a three-part series, and now it's become a three-part series. So all of you on the session today, but there is a part two to this and a part three to this. And part two and three will expand on the current offer that you're going to be talking about, to, learning about today, and move you from uh, the travel analytics conversation to benchmarking on July 8th. 
and then we'll have a part three of that session where we now talk about expense analysis. So you're in for a treat, uh, and of course, um, I'm really uh, happy that Mark and Kate have decided to join us today. Uh, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mark. Mark, it's all yours. Great. Thank you, Ash, for that introduction. I'll share my screen now. Um, great. So I just uh, my name is Mark Bresnahan. I'm the general manager for Prime Numbers Technology, and uh, I'd like to just give a little bit of an overview of who Prime Numbers is uh, in the way that we partner uh, with JTB, just to set the stage so you can understand um, a little bit about uh, how we work, and then Kate will jump in and start talking about some very specific actions you can take out of this uh, webinar today. Um, so, you know, the partnership with JTV is very important to us. Um, we work and collaborate with them on a weekly basis uh, to ensure that the product is uh, meeting the needs of their customers, all of you, um, and driving them towards uh, the future uh, with constant improvements, enhancements, uh, we, we're doing releases with this product every two to three months, so you can always expect that um, this partnership and the software tools are going to be current and staying up to date with um, where travel data is headed and where spend reporting is headed. Um, so, so why would you work with Prime Numbers Technology? So we're trying to simplify your life at the end of the day, and we're doing that with predictive analytics. Um, which is what we'll talk about today with the goal setting. Um, relevant benchmarking, so that's apples to apples comparisons about your organization, and we'll be discussing that in the second webinar, as well as data consolidation. So this will be bringing in uh, multiple sets of data from different sources, and that will be part of webinar number three. Uh, and then, of course, we have your, your pre-trip and spend reporting, and we do some air contract optimization as well with our technology. Um, so the types of uh, users that we have in the system will be corporate travel managers and procurement professionals, uh, TMC account managers and reporting BI specialists, travel consulting companies, and really anybody that might interact with the travel program or information um, derived from the reporting. Um, so, we're kind of a, a set of um, tools and services to help you manage all this information. And as Ash was discussing today, travel analytics, um, that's purchasing behavior and policy compliance. Uh, expense analysis is a, is a very dedicated module uh, as part of travel analytics, and that is for the data consolidation and really looking at your total um, T&E. Uh, prime sourcing is the air contract, air contract optimization suite that we have. And then we have our um, benchmark database, which I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, in a few minutes. So the um, controlling your purchasing behavior and policy compliance, that, that's travel analytics. That's really what we'll get into today. But it, it does comprise so much that we're going to cover it over um, the, three web, the three webinars that we've discussed. So today will be the advanced analytics with the goal setting. Uh, benchmarking will be the second one, and data consolidation uh, coming up. Uh, in the future. Okay, so I'd like to uh, launch um, a poll here. Um, and, um, and Taylor, if you can get the poll up here. So I'd like all of you to, uh, to take a look at this poll and please do respond to it. Uh, and uh, the poll that we're going to be uh, talking about is what data source uh, does your company utilize in making proactive decisions about your travel program? So maybe some of you rely on reports uh, from your TMC. Um, Hopefully it's us. <laughs> and then you might be uh, requesting for reports through your expense platform, like a concur expense or similar, um, reports from your ERP, um, Oracle, SAP, or maybe you don't actively monitor data today. So I'd like you to um, go ahead and submit your poll answers, and we'll take a look at uh, the results today and uh, see uh, what kind of audience we have. So let's go ahead and get that in. And Taylor, whenever you're ready, you can pop up the poll results here. Okay, so um, 
the, in the audience today, we have um, a mixture of uh, TMC report uh, users, uh, expense platform, and then we actually have one third of the people that are not proactively monitoring data today. So I think that, you know, and this is my humble opinion, but I'll let you, Mark, uh, chime in on this, but I think that one of the reasons why people don't monitor data is because of the uh, cumbersome nature of that, right? And I, and like anything, you know, if something is difficult or not easy, you tend to um, not really focus in on it. So I'd like to, uh, you know, of course, the ones of you who are using reports from your expense platform or your TMC, that's great, uh, but I do want to spend some time on making uh, a, a suggestion around you know how we're going to make this easier for all the folks on the phone who are not actively doing the monitoring and how easy it is so uh, what's your thoughts um, when you see this mark yeah absolutely so um, that is definitely an initiative we have here in terms of the way that we develop our software tools and try to um, provide the analytics so um, first of all automation so we are um, always trying to automate as much of the process as possible so if we're looking at getting the data from the TMC, it's coming to us in an automated way with normalization and cleansing uh, that's happening with the loading. Um, if we're bringing in data from other data uh, sources, such as um, expense companies or credit card companies, same thing, that's an automated process. We don't want you to have to touch that information. So we'll come into Prime. Uh, and then once the information is in the tool and you're looking to interact with it, what you'll see is our, our user interface is really just point and click. So um, it's, it's all instant information where just in a few clicks, you can go from the highest level of your travel program and just start drilling down all the way down to the traveler level. So we really, um, we really think about that when we're developing and, and trying to figure out how uh, a part of the tool will function. We want it to be simple, um, get you there with a few clicks, and you don't have to be sort of a um, report or BI expert to access that information. Okay, great. So, um, you know, teeing off of that, you know, just to, to talk a little bit more about um, the data integration piece. So, um, with travel analytics with expense analysis, that is where we can do that automation of bringing in data from multiple sources. So, TMC, expense, credit card data, HR data to make sure that you can access and report on the information um, based on your organizational hierarchy. And once you have that information in one place, you can now actually see your whole total travel costs in one location. Um, so you don't have to run your expense reporting here and your, your TMC data here. It really gives you that complete visibility and you can start targeting what's leaking outside of um, the TMC, outside of that managed travel program. And uh, what we find is typically uh, over 35% of um, bookings are leaking outside of the travel program. So uh, as much as you can bring that in, the more you can leverage that to negotiate with um, suppliers and ensure that you're getting the discounts that you managed um, with those vendors. Um, we can also automate uh, credit card reconciliation reports here. We can track um, budgets now that we have your total uh, spend and you can do that um, by cost center, department, um, region, anything that might be relevant to you. And we can now look at ancillary costs. So what's getting, um, what's, what am I spending on my trips besides the air, or the car, and the hotel? And so I can start to pinpoint that and manage that more effectively. Um, so uh, back to the benchmarking piece, which we'll talk about in the next webinar, just to give you an idea, um, as Ash mentioned earlier, um, in 2019, we had over 13 million transactions. Um, that's about $6 billion in, in total spend and over 5,000 corporate accounts in the system. And what's different about the way we benchmark is uh, you can actually compare yourself against a company of a similar spend uh, and or a similar industry, region, even things like travel policy enforcement type. So you really get that apples to apples comparison to know um, that you're comparing yourself against somebody who is actually relevant to you. And it's only corporate travel data, so you won't be comparing against any leisure bookings that might skew the data. Uh, and in fact, recently we partnered with um, Business Travel News and we're actually um, giving them data that they're using for their benchmark statistics uh, in their corporate travel index product. 
Um, and uh, lastly, I just want to mention prime sourcing. So this is a very um, specific subset of uh, a prime tool where we can actually load your air contracts um, in an automated fashion. You can monitor them in real time, do um, scenario analysis to say, if I'm going to ship share from one carrier to another, how much money could I save? Uh, and then you can also do things like compare um, air contracts uh, existing versus proposals and see which one is really better for your organization. So that's just an example of one of the you know, various ways that we can help you optimize your travel program. So with that, um, thank you for your time today. Really appreciate it. And I'm going to turn it over, um, I think, for a quick poll. And then Kate will start in on the uh, goals and ROI analysis. OK, great. So um, we'll push up a poll here. Uh, great, it's on the screen. So some of you um, didn't notice the poll last time, uh, so I'd like to uh, let you know that the poll is live. Uh, and, uh, and on the poll, uh, you will be asked the question of, how does your company measure the success of your travel policy and or the effectiveness of your travel program? So you might say someone runs the report and analyzes it manually. Uh, we don't want to do anything because we want to hope for the best. Hopefully none of you take that answer. I think that was put in there for humor, humor purposes. Um, but then uh, maybe some of you would like to do it, but you want automation because you're not interested in doing it manually. So um, let's go ahead and, uh, and respond to that. And let's see uh, what Kate's working with when she starts to talk about uh, the technology and shows you the technology itself. OK. So uh, it's all about uh, manual, and uh, they want to do it, and they want automation, Kate. So I think you got the right audience here for what you're going to be talking about now. Excellent. All right, let me just share my screen. All right, hopefully everybody can see my screen, and we'll kind of move on through. So. I really appreciate being invited to speak to you about this today. Um, I'm a data geek at heart, and uh, you will see that in my presentation. Um, and to recap a little bit of what Mark talked about in terms of the tool and the product suite, um, we have analytics, the travel analytics core, and also some tools that are in general, um, including things like industry stats, which is a, a breakdown of our average fares and our benchmark database. So when you do get access to the tool and you want to take a peek and preview uh, some of the upcoming things we'll be talking about in depth, you can dive in and look at the benchmark data. Um, but today, we're going to focus on goals and goal setting with goals and ROI. So in general, when we're setting a goal, uh, we, we're setting that starting point. We, we need to have a baseline to establish that starting point and then an end in mind, right? A finish line. So Analyzing our behavior relative to the goals is essentially what helps us across the finish line. And within Prime, uh, the way we do that is by establishing a baseline and setting up some goals to measure, measure policy, um, looking at, you know, where does your program stand today relative to, you know, your selected benchmark. And in this case, our selected benchmark is prior period. Um, we have started you off or JTB has started you off when you log into the tool and you're looking at your data with some preset goals in mind. Um, and that's great. It gives you a good starting point. We recommend that you look at prior period as a comparison benchmark initially rather than the other fun benchmarks we have to select from because it gives you a kind of comparison of yourself year over year over several years and establishes a trend. Now, a little bit of what we're going to show you is how and some is the why. So let's look at how the goals work. So the goals page shows you kind of an overall actual versus goal and actual versus benchmark. And in this case, I've set a goal for each of these policy drivers. I can look at my actual in the time period I'm analyzing, which is 2019. And then I can see what I've done in 2018. Then when I drill into any one of these goals, they all work very similarly in that they have an ROI savings analysis, a trend, compliance, savings drill down. Um, so they'll be the same. And once you navigate one, you've learned how to navigate them all. Uh, and that's intentional. Whenever you see something in our tool like a gear, it's a configuration or a setting. And then whenever you see something 
with I, it's, a, it's essentially more information. So we'll dive into that as we move through. Now, this particular goal is acceptance of lowest fare. And it shows me that I have an actual 57.4. I was doing a little bit better last year, and I've kind of a reach goal based on where I was last year. It also gives me some information in terms of what I can do to change behavior to drive savings. Now, what this is saying is there were 6,590 times that I did not take the lowest fare in 2019. Now, if I shifted behavior 100% of the time, based on the average difference in fare, there's a potential average savings that I could achieve. But we know that 100% adoption of anything is not realistic. So we also give you the ability to model. So what happens if I change behavior, you know, roughly, you know, 19, 20% of the time? Also, it's based on the max possible savings, and we can change that scenario. So we can look at the potential savings, which is what we're doing, based on max possible, based on you know reaching 100% or some subset thereof. In this case, I've said it's 19%. I can change that to look at what happens when I reach the benchmark. I can also change that, again, to look at when I meet the goal. So depending on your particular program, and how you're driven, the goal, 57 to 70, is going to get me essentially $400,000 in savings, reaching that 70%. Um, if you're selecting other benchmarks, which we'll get into in depth in our second session, um, you can do some really interesting things. But let's say what we're starting here with a 400,000, and I'm going to just set this at like 20% roughly, and save that. So that's the first step. What's the what's the baseline for the program? Where am I starting out? Where do I want to go with each of my policy drivers? Um, and then what type of scenario am I interested in, in meeting? In this case, we're looking at meeting the goal. The second step is then identifying what matters the most to you and why. Really looking at your program, understanding what policies you have in place, and how they're aligning with your business plan, your strategy, and your culture. So for example, preferred carriers. If this particular thing, if preferred compliance is most important to you, you have lots of airline contracts and you've set up your preferred carriers and you really want to make sure that you're maximizing those contracts. Um, you can reorder goals and drag this to the top. You can also uh, weight goals. So I'm going to save that. And using this gear, I can select any one of the goals, and I can change the weighting at the right. So maybe saving money is really important to me. Uh, so maybe not the top. Let's make it second, but let's make it really heavily weighted. And you'll notice at the top, as I weight this more heavily, it actually impacts my overall. So it impacts that baseline. We start off with all of these set to 50%, uh, but this can be changed. And again, we can always reorder um, the goals in an order that is preferential to us. And we can add goals that make sense. So the goals here cover everything from uh, low fare to ticket exchanges, refunds, um, air cabin, which we'll look at, online adoption. Um, there are goals for car rentals, including car class, uh, preferred car rental uh, vendor, and trips booked with a car as well as hotel. Um, in hotels, we use tiers, which are standard, you know, upper, upper scale, mid scale tiers, have per diems, and then preferred property and chain compliance and trips with hotel booking. So that's just making sure that we're booking a hotel with air to maximize the booking process. So once we've kind of met, measured what matters and selected what matters to us, the next thing is to really look at the information and what it's telling you. So how strong is your adherence to those chosen goals? And what kind of detail information exists? And what is it telling you? So if I look at any one of these trends, and I look at the trend analysis, is it improving year over year or not? Um, clearly, this one is not, right? So I'm not. Uh, 
pushing this as a as a weighted goal. This is something I'm doing worse and worse on year over year. Um, but why? Right. So what's driving that? Is it a specific group or department? Um, is it a specific team, a specific traveler? So we can then look at by traveler, uh, region, department, and division. These are examples of hierarchy, but this could be you know whatever you're capturing in your booking process. And I can see there are certain teams that are least or less compliant with this behavior than others. Maybe the goal isn't a, a good goal. Maybe it's too much of a reach, or maybe there's a specific team that really shouldn't be part of this goal. Um, we don't really enforce this for that sales team. It's not part of their culture. Um, they they travel internationally a lot. You know, whatever the reasoning is, um, you can always exclude a specific team or group from the goals to make them more specific, which is critical, right? So if I exclude sales here and click save, they're going to disappear. So they're being counted in the overall for all of the other goals, but not this one. Now, oh, oh, do I hear a question, Ash? No, I just wanted to make a comment because this is great for me and Mark because we're, we, we, we're the sales team, so we tend to travel a lot. So we love it when you remove us from your goal setting. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> advanced purchase doesn't, doesn't apply, right? I get it. And actually, that's the advanced purchase case is one of those things that you can have personas within your travel program that impact that wildly. And while advanced purchase is a really difficult measure, and sometimes and some people would say not a really constant measure, it, here we can see you know 14 day advanced purchase has a zero dollar savings because in this case for my demo account, it's actually cheaper to book shorter term. <laughs> so while that might not apply. It especially doesn't apply to specific departments. Um, it may to others. So looking at your policy and then being able to refine it and let the automation give you that baseline is, is kind of part of what we do and why we exist to kind of solve these problems. Now, one of the kind of final things or the, the final steps in this whole process is looking at whether the goals you've set will actually help you achieve your, your ultimate goal, will help you with what matters most to you. So some goals, and we kind of showed you this a little bit with the 14 day advance, but um, some goals, while they measure compliance, um, don't equal hard dollar savings. So looking at hotel chain, it's another one, the great example. I can look at this goal and looking at the ROI, it's telling me that in a, on average, it's actually less expensive to book with the non-preferred than with the preferred. That's pretty common. That's common with airlines. When you, when you have a contract, you're getting a contract on a premium product. So it may be more expensive, but you're getting it at a discount. With hotel chains in this case, that $1.73 is telling you that the non-preferred hotel chain is cheaper. So it's counterproductive to shift trips to meet the goal from a savings perspective. But as human beings, we actually know, in fact, that these preferred hotels um, may include Wi-Fi or parking, which is at a premium in some cities. Um, Ash, you live in Manhattan, don't you, New York? Wi-Fi wi -Fi and parking are critical. Well worth $1.73. So therefore, the point is that the metrics don't tell you the whole story ever. No matter how much automation we apply as human beings, we still have to tell the story to some degree based on the information we're presented. So we do have the ability in the tool to have goals that are the antithesis, that are showing us a, a counterintuitive behavior to savings, which is fine. Um, we can add a goal, for example, like Air Cabin. This goal may be used to look at whether or not you know, we want the uh, you know, people to book economy and we want to enforce that. However, we can also choose to use this goal in a different way. We can say, show me business class international. And it's going to change the title of that. I'm going to save that. I'm going to reorder it and move it to the top just so we can see it a little bit better. Now, what this is telling me now that I've set this up to be business class international is 
how many times our travelers have traveled business class internationally. The goal is pretty low. It was kind of arbitrarily set. I can change that. Um, I can see what I did last year. Um, and to me in my program, maybe this is a critical thing. This is all about enforcing behavior and policies that are positives and not negative. So not all policy is reinforcement and compliance. Um, policies can be things like we really want to encourage people to take an international business class trip. And then similarly, we have goals like online adoption where we can actually set those goals uh, very, very nimbly. So we can set the goal for domestic and look at single destination trips. We can create a copy of this goal and I'll actually do that for you. I'm gonna change this and call the single domestic so I can rename this to whatever makes sense to me and save it. Um, and then maybe I wanna add another goal for online adoption. And I'm going to make this one a little bit different. I'm gonna say that this goal is gonna be multiple trips um, domestic. So I really am not focused at all in my program and on pushing people to book internationally online. Just by adding those two goals, I can reorder them and put them together. Um, I've now created really simple single line uh, kind of tracking on how well I'm doing to getting people to book straightforward domestic trips and complex domestic trips domestic trips online versus with an agent. Um, and just a note, the savings here is based on a pretend booking fee difference, um, but there are other benefits to booking online. There's there's some speed, um, you know, when you need an agent, you absolutely need an agent, but when people want to book online, that's part of your culture and your travelers are satisfied doing it, you want to encourage that. Um, and I should note that this functionality um, of having the single and multiple domestic international as a kind of goal refinement was Ash's idea. So we do actually take ideas from our clients and use them. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Every time I've demoed that, Ash has, has told me he needs a credit on the page, but we haven't quite figured out how to do that uh, one day. It'll, have helped, uh, it'll be a help tip, Ash, and it will say this this feature provided to you by. So in in summary, in terms of what I've said so far, the, the idea is that broad brushstroke enforcement can actually hurt you and not help you. So the tool is designed to allow you to have very specific goals ordered in a way that makes sense to you, weighted in a way that makes sense to your program, and driving the specific things that matter for the departments and groups that mat that impact it. Now, in, in summary, um, the goals show you patterns of purchase behavior. So when we're looking at car rental as an example, and I look at compliance, I can look at this at the traveler level or department level. But what I am seeing is how many times the purchase of this particular item from this vendor counted towards or against a goal. What you do with the information, whether you export it and share it that way, uh, you can schedule and print these views, um, or use this information coming to you from your JTB uh, client services manager in your quarterly review, right? Say you're sharing that information with your stakeholders. Um, whatever you do with the information, um, know that understanding your starting point and getting an understanding of what you wanna measure based on what's important to you is what's really critical. Um, and that's gonna vary. Uh, whether your culture is strict and policy based, um, you might wanna show these department heads what their impact is to your program. Uh, we have scorecards that can be generated where you can drill in and actually generate not a company-wide program-wide score, but a score for each program, for each department or each cost center within your company. The legal team is the culprit today. They're, they're doing, they're 10 out of 10. So they're at the bottom of the list in terms of ranking. And I can look at that particular team and understand their actual the goal and what they did in the prior period as well. And then I can even drill into specific traveler exceptions within the legal department in a, in a report pop-up and save this, looking at the reasoning behind it and the specifics for the travelers. 
I can export the details or I can export this particular view and share it with those department heads for training and reminding because our culture is policy and compliance. Or if your culture is more relaxed and you use the tool to share feedback and allow those stakeholders to self-assess and look at where they stand and then drive compliance on their own. So the tool automates the act of all the analysis so that you can engage in kind of new and different ways. And all the measurements combined, um, even down to the traveler level, are, are here to tell you the story of the improvement over time. You know, where you were and where you are um, on kind of a continuum of, of improvement. So looking at incremental improvement to the program over time and driving the success. Now, um, as a side note, um, I did mention that you can use other benchmarks other than prior period to drive uh, kind of more interesting comparisons. And those benchmark selections exist here. They are uh, completely fluid. So here I'm comparing period over period. We can compare to similar spend, industry, world region, country, and subregion. You can also compare within your own company. Uh, which is very interesting because you can look at, say, the sales team versus your company as the benchmark and see how they're stacking up as an internal comparison. So we'll cover all of that in more depth in our session in July. Um, and should you have questions or want to deep dive into your goals and ROI and start setting these goals up for your program, given access to the tool, um, feel free to reach out to your client services manager at JTB. Um, they're adept at using this tool and able to help you review and refine these goals um, to help you kind of move your program along. So with that, I'll turn it over to Ash and Taylor with a Q&A. Great. Uh, so I want to just make a couple of comments, uh, Kate, and um, you know, for the for the audience uh, and for our travel managers who are on the call today. Uh, you know, one of the things that I think is um, always on everybody's mind is, you know, we're spending money on travel, uh, and um, and obviously these days the question is a little bit. Um, Different, but you know, in a normal circumstance, right? We're spending money in travel, and how do I understand the value of that spend, right? And you know, so clearly within this process of goal setting, you can create that uh, and understand that. Uh, in your experience, have have companies, uh, you know, started to um, you know use scorecards as a way to really drive the effectiveness of the travel program? Because it's always been an arbitrary thing, right? How well is your travel program doing? Great. Um, but now you have a number. Now you have, uh, uh, you know, the 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 actual uh, uh, comparison of your travel program. You know, according to whatever your company wants to set up, whether it be your own, you know, your own yourself, your benchmark, you know, your goal, whatever it might be. So, this, uh, you know, the scorecard piece uh, I think is really important. And you know, I want to challenge all the travel managers on the call today uh, and within our customer base that really, you know, we want to make sure that when people look at travel, they don't look at it in an arbitrary way. And I think it's been it's been kind of the way it has been because people have an impression about the travel program, so they go, oh. I think we're spending money. Um, I think it's a lot. Uh, I think we should change it. But having a number next to goal and, and having a scorecard, I think really clarifies uh, uh, to executives because a lot of times executives don't have the ability to deep dive and they don't really care uh, maybe, but to be able to go into a quarterly meeting or an annual meeting and say, okay, you know, as a manager of the travel program, this is how we're doing. This is how we are measured up against ourselves or however it's been set up. Um, and then it provides a continuous um, you know, a point of reference that can be carried on or changed depending on, uh, on, on how the organization feels. But um, so, so, so what do you make of all of that um, that I just said? I just want to kind of get your opinion about it. And I think really, and I'd like the travel managers to really, um, you know, use this function and to be able to define what their travel program is going to be all about. Yeah, I mean, what I think about it, I've, I've done a lot of analysis of a lot of programs in my career. And, and ultimately, it's very difficult to move the needle forward if you don't know where you stand today and you have no clear measurement. So one of the things that you, you can look at, right, there's, there's a big broad brush stroke things you can look at in a program to tell you how well you're doing on cost control. Um, but having the actual policy breakdown here um, and having it broken down by specific 
metrics, specific levers and specific policies that you can then say, you know, this policy is just not working and isn't really saving us any money. So why use it, right? If, if advanced purchase is just not ever really working for your program and it's a bane of existence for your travelers, why use it, right? Yeah. Um, it's one of those things. The other thing is, you're right, at, at the highest level, nobody wants to be the data geek. And I get that. That's why I have a job. I love what I do, right? So, so yeah. with that, we do things like the calculator, which breaks down our goals into actual, you know, actionable statements. You know, increase acceptance of lowest fare, this 21%. So change 1,100 tickets, 1,184 tickets, um, and you have the potential to save this much money. So it boils it down for folks to the nuts and bolts. What do I do to impact the change I want? And what changes matter? Uh, and I think that's important. It's it's like any other KPI. You know, when you do a, a review on an annual basis within your company of how you're performing, you have to know where you started to know kind of where you've gone. So I think it's very important. I think that having not only the the goals, but then as we start adding in other layers of it, benchmarking comparisons, um, trending over time, it gives you the tools to see the program from the right perspective, from a little bit of distance and say, okay, how do we manipulate this? How do we manage this to make it a success? Yeah, so um, yeah, thank you for that comment. Um, I really appreciate that. And, um, and you know, uh, again, you know, I, I really um, asked all our clients on the call today to dig deep into this. Uh, and, you know, the reason why we're, we're, we're excited about this technology and this offering to all of you is simply because we think it's easy, we think it's useful, um, and we, it doesn't require you to sit there and have to, you know, modify spreadsheets and create Excel files and pie charts. I mean, it's all done for you as Kate showed you. So. Um, uh, do take advantage of it and do, uh, you know, start measuring your hotel program with the goal settings. And today we just touched on one topic, um, but you'll hear us talk about different things as we've alluded throughout the, today's presentation. So with that, I'll give it to you, Taylor. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you to uh, Osh and thank you, Mark and Kate, our uh, special guest tech talkers for being here with us today and for sharing all of that information with us. We're not done just yet. On your screen, you will see uh, some next steps, and it was touched on throughout uh, today's presentation. But uh, for more information, please don't hesitate to uh, reach out to your client services manager. They'll be happy to uh, help you learn more about this process and to walk you through it, and uh, they can help you schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting so that they can discuss your company specifics with you. So please don't hesitate to do this. Uh, they're happy to help you out with that and to give you more information. And at this point, we have reached our question and answer session. And as expected, this topic was very well covered. We don't have too many questions, but we have some time here, so we will go over what we do have. Um, now, our first question here uh, will, is maybe for Osh. Will this analytics tool be available to all JTV clients, uh, or will this tool be a tool with extra charges? So just in case uh, you couldn't hear me, I'll go ahead and ask the question again. Uh, this question is for Ash. I'm sorry, we'll Taylor. I heard the question. I, I was on mute. I apologize. Uh, so, oh, uh, so no yeah. So that's a that's a great question. And uh, for those of you who know me, you know that I hate charging our clients anything. Uh, so uh, with that, I'm going to say that this uh, this technology will be available to you. Um, uh, whether there's extra charges or not, um, the answer will be no. There's no extra charges. Uh, but uh, we do want to change um, how we want to offer this service to you. So. Um, um, do speak to your client services manager about it um, and do discuss the opportunity here. Uh, but the goal of this service offering is for all our clients to have access to it uh, and to use it actively in managing your travel program. Great. Thank you, Ash. So that answers that. Um, and now our next question, uh, I would like to ask Kate in regards to the demo. Can you explain the importance and meaning of weight? That's a good question. So the weighting is taken into account when calculating the the score for the specific line item. Um, so that line item, if you, if you have a weighting of zero, let's say, or two, is going to be much 
less of an impact in your overall score than if you had a weighting of a 99. So the, the weighting just lets you kind of put more importance on a specific uh, item, whether or not it is in stacked order. So the stacked order is just visually how you want to see them in order. And I like to put the things that are most important to me at the top of the screen. I think a lot of people do. Um, so naturally, those are the things I would probably weight more heavily, but the weighting it just is a factor in the overall calculation of your score. Um, and we actually have information on the help, uh, which I can provide to Taylor after the call, about the calculations um, that will kind of demonstrate that, that weighting and how it's done mathematically. Okay, great, thank you. Great explanation and looking forward to more information on that. Um, and just another question we would like to ask here. So as I mentioned, since the topic was so well covered, there weren't too many questions, but this is a question that I would like to ask um, as uh, the quote unquote voice of the customer. So the question is, how will a company's making use of travel analytics make life better for their travelers? So uh, Mark, Kate, Osh, go ahead and uh, speak to that, please. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll take a stab at that one. Um, I like challenge here. So I think that, uh, you know, as a traveler, uh, you know, one of the things that is always um, annoying to me uh, is when, you know, I hear general comments uh, being made in my organization, like, you know, comments like, oh, you know, we could be saving more money or, oh, you could have been doing something better. And it's always this arbitrary thing uh, that is uh, discussed. Um, uh, and, 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 I, and I think it's going to be, I think that's the case in many companies. So the nice thing I like about travel analytics is that you can hone in on, uh, you know, the area of the company um, uh, by using scorecards, as Kate showed, uh, and really define, uh, you know, how well an a, a individual is doing or a organization is doing. So if you are an individual who follows the company policies well, you book advance, you use preferred carriers and all that good stuff, that's great, right? And so I think that by having that being measured in such detail, instead of it just being generic, um, you know, just because somebody travels a lot doesn't mean that they're not effective. And so I think that what this will do is it'll give travel managers and, and, and as a result of that, the travelers uh, confidence in being able to say, hey, you know, I'm following the rules of the organization. I think that clarity is really helpful. And um, okay. I would add to that, if you don't mind. So I would say exactly that. I agree with you, Ash. And I think that one of the critical things is only measuring folks against KPIs that they can meet and that makes sense for them in their role. Um, we see a lot of data and we notice that people are different in the way they travel. Um, so somebody working in say a field service organization is going to travel to an area, drive around in a circle and go to multiple places and then fly home. It's very common. They might have multiple hotel bookings. They might have much lower airfare, right? They have a lot of things in common in those types of roles they probably have to travel emergently. So having an advanced purchase rule apply to them is almost an unfair metric. So being able to exclude folks from metrics and only focus on the metrics that matter, uh, I think is, is what will drive the traveler to kind of adhering to the program because they see that it's making sense for them. They're not being measured, as Ash said, arbitrarily. Hey, great, thank you so much. Very well said. And uh, I want to thank all of our uh, tech talkers today, uh, Ash and our special guest speakers, Mark and Kate. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, we know that we are ending a little bit early, so you have some time back to yourselves uh, here at the end of this session. Thank you to all who joined this session today. We at JTB Business Travel are very pleased to have hosted this session with Prime Numbers Technology. And we hope that you've all thoroughly enjoyed uh, and benefited from the material presented. And as you can see on your screen, part two of this Tech Talk series with Prime Numbers Technology is being held on July 8th at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. And you won't want to miss that one. The topic is benchmarking analysis powered by Prime Numbers. And we really want you to join us back for that uh, so you can have a nice continuation of this series and so you can see the complexities and offerings of this technology that Prime Numbers is bringing to the table. So in part two, uh, you'll see how you can take control of your benchmark metrics uh, choose to calculate and compare against companies with similar spend, industry, and geographical location, and compare against your own past performance to explore and manage changes. So you can register for that one with the same link that you used to register for this session today. Thank you again, everyone. Thank you uh, to our speakers, and we hope that we have you with us live at our next Tech Talk. Have a great day.